We have major breaking news coming out of Ukraine that could have a serious impact on the impeachment trial of Donald Trump. The famous ousted prosecutor, Victor Shokin, has sent a letter demanding criminal charges be filed against Joe Biden for interfering in law enforcement activity. And this strikes at the heart of the impeachment argument. In the infamous call with Ukraine, Donald Trump said he wanted them to look into Burisma and potentially Joe Biden. Democrats argue he did this because he was trying to cheat in an election. But Republicans argue Trump perceived potential corruption at these companies. Now, the Democrats haven't pre- presented any evidence as to Trump's motive. And Republicans don't need to prove there was actually corruption, just that there's reason to believe there was corruption and Trump was justified in investigating this. Now, with the former prosecutor general of Ukraine saying he wants criminal charges against Joe Biden, it certainly adds to the idea that Biden may have been acting in a corrupt manner. To give you some context, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was on the board of a company called Burisma, an energy company that many people, Democrats and Republicans alike, agree is corrupt. Numerous news stories emerged saying it was a conflict of interest for Joe Biden to be working on weeding out corruption in Ukraine if his son was on the board of a company many people thought was corrupt. Well, a famous viral video was sent out, or I'm sorry, a famous video was sent out that went viral showing Joe Biden brag about how he threatened to withhold a billion dollars in aid unless this prosecutor was fired. The prosecutor argues it was because he was going to investigate Joe Biden's son. If this is true, or actually regardless of whether or not it's true or not, It certainly provides evidence that a reasonable person would conclude Joe Biden may have been engaged in corruption and an investigation was warranted. It doesn't mean Joe Biden is corrupt. It means perhaps Trump Trump was right or had a real reason to believe Joe Biden may be doing something malicious or nefarious. But there's a lot to go through now with the impeachment trial currently underway. And it seems, at least to me, that based on the evidence, I think Joe Biden was actually protecting his son. I really do. And I'm going to show you why. Because one of the arguments brought forth by this prosecutor was that if the reason he was ousted was because he wasn't investigating Burisma, why is it that the new prosecutor also did not investigate Burisma? It doesn't seem to make sense. But let me present all of this news as we have it so far and talk about what's going on with the latest impeachment trial. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's several ways you can give. I have a new address, address if you want to send stuff. But the best thing you can do is actually just share this video. There's a lot of people who are never going to hear this. In fact, I think it's fair to say it might not have an impact on the impeachment trial at all because most people won't report the news and will likely never make it to Trump's legal team. So if you think it's important, take a look at this information and hear what these people have to say. Consider sharing this video so that more people can see it. And and honestly, it just really does help me. I want to say a few things first. The story is coming from Interfax Ukraine, a Ukrainian news agency, and Interfax is owned by a Russian parent company. Take it for what it is. Now, the documents appear to be legitimate. Uh, The document, the the letter sent by Shokin demanding these charges was apparently given by his lawyer to this news agency, and we have no reason to believe that's not the case. Interfax is a legitimate and one of the oldest news agencies in Ukraine. However, Shokin could potentially be lying or trying to fan the flames and the chaos in the United States as the impeachment trial is is currently underway. But let's read at least what he has to say and take a look at the evidence so far. Interfax reports, Shokin demands SBI bring Biden to criminal liability statement. They say, Ukrainian ex-prosecutor general Viktor Shokin has demanded the State Bureau of Investigations open criminal proceedings against former U.S. President, uh, for, I'm sorry, former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden for illegal influence on him as the prosecutor general of Ukraine. Quote, I ask you to register a criminal offense against me in the U- Unified Register of Pretrial Investigations by a U.S. citizen, Joseph Biden, which happened on the territory of Ukraine and abroad, namely interference with the activities of a law enforcement officer, the responsibility for which is provided for in part two of Article 343 of Ukraine's criminal code, immediately start a pretrial investigation and give written instructions to SBI investigators, Shokin said in a statement to the acting SBI director delivered by Shokin's lawyers. Shokin said he agreed to resign as prosecutor general of Ukraine due to Biden pressure. Quote, During the last months of 2015 and the first of 2016, Joseph Biden, using his official position, 
personally paid official visits to Ukraine several times with the aim of holding negotiations with the state leaders on my removal from my post. As a result, he curtailed an objective investigation, criminal proceedings on the facts of unlawful activities of persons associated with the company Burisma Holdings Limited, Cyprus, including the son of the specified high ranking official, Shokin said. Shokin said Biden demanded that he be fired in exchange for the unhindered provision of Ukraine with a U.S. state guarantee in the amount of $1 billion. Shokin said Biden's actions can be considered as pressure according to the scientific and legal conclusion of the International Law Association of April 18, 2017, provided by Doctor of Law, Professor Meres- Merezko, currently vice president of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. They say facts about Biden's illegal influence against Shokin are confirmed by the results of an independent international journalistic investigation named UkraineGate, conducted and published by the French internet publication lescreases.fr. Now, I'm not super familiar with lescreases.fr. I did look into them. I'm not trying to smear or defame anybody, but they have been accused of supporting or pushing Russian propaganda, of being conspiracy theorists. I'm not going to levy judgment against them. And it has very little bearing on the releasement of this document, which we can now see. Interfax actually published it. So uh, this, this story I'm highlighting is just a lot of people don't know that Joe Biden actually said at a Council on Foreign Relations meeting that he did do this. It is a fact. Joe Biden bragged about getting the prosecutor fired. But let's let's see the uh, this is the document right here. OK, it was released. It's where Shokin says he wants criminal charges. I can't read Ukrainian, but I reached out to someone to translate and to verify. And this is from the website lescreases.fr. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. My understanding based on an independent individual I know who I asked to translate that this is an accurate translation of the document. The website reads prosecutor Shokin files a complaint against Joe Biden for interference in Ukraine's legal proceedings. Now, I want to stress It may be that this is just being put out there because the impeachment trial is underway and it does help Donald Trump. I don't know. None of that really matters to me. I'm not going to speculate. What I can say is Shokin is making the accusation and he's demanding these charges. I won't read too much because I don't don't, don't want to read the whole thing for you, but I will read some of his conclusions. He says, let let me read through a bit. To the uh, interim director of the National Bureau of Investigation, complaint against Joe Biden on the commission of a criminal offense. He says during the period of 2014 to 2016, the prosecutor general's office of Ukraine was conducting a preliminary investigation into a series of serious crimes committed by the former minister of ecology of Ukraine, Mykola Zlachevsky, and by managers of the company Burisma Holding Limited, the board of directors of which included, among others, Hunter Biden, son of Joseph Biden, then vice president of the United States of America. The investigation into the above mentioned crimes was carried out in strict accordance with criminal law and was under my personal control as the prosecutor general of Ukraine. Owing to my firm position on the above mentioned cases regarding their prompt and objective investigation, which should have resulted in the arrest and the indictment of the guilty parties, Joseph Biden developed a firmly hostile attitude towards me, which led him to express in private conversations with senior Ukrainian officials as well as in his public speeches, a categorical request for my immediate dismissal from the post of attorney general of Ukraine in exchange for the sum of U.S. $1 billion in as a financial guarantee from the U.S. for the benefit of Ukraine. The facts I've described above are confirmed, among other things, by the official interview of Joe Biden published in the media, where he declares that Ukraine will not receive money if I remain in my post as attorney general. We read this next part where he says that Joe Biden kept coming throughout 2015 and 2016. He says, due to the continued pressure from the vice president of the United States, Joseph Biden, to oust me from the job by blackmailing the allocation of financial assistance, I, as the man who places the state interests above my personal interests, I agreed to abandon the post of prosecutor general of Ukraine. After my resignation caused by illegal pressure, no active investigation into the offenses concerning the company Burisma Holding Limited was carried out and therefore the persons implicated in these offenses were not identified nor arrested or charged. And that to me is very, very serious evidence. It's true. As far as we know from all sources, there was no investigation into Burisma after this man left his office. So I bring you now to an interesting bit of information from CNN and perhaps a serious mistake on the part of Democrats. 
Four facts omitted by Pam Bondi in Trump's legal defense pertaining to Burisma and Donald Trump's uh, invest or the, the, the desire for an investigation into Ukraine. I want to show you this. From Fox News, Jesse Waters praises Trump attorney Bondi's meticulous Hunter Biden argument. It doesn't look good for Joe. It's simple. Trump's legal defense, Pam Bondi, argued very well, I might add, regardless of whether you think it's true, that it does look bad that Hunter Biden was acting in some corrupt capacity. He was receiving a lot of money. No one really knows why. CNN decided to rebut. And in my opinion, their rebuttal, it's really bad for the Democrats. Though they're trying to refute Trump's legal defense, they just bolstered it. And I want to show you why. CNN says, President Donald Trump's lawyer, Pam Bondi, played a video clip of former Vice President Joe Biden recounting in a 2018 event how he had pressured Ukraine to fire its prosecutor general, Victor Shokin. Bondi claimed that Shokin had been, at the time of the pressure in late 2015 and early 2016, investigating Burisma, the company where Biden's son, Hunter Biden, sat on the board of directors. Now, here's where the Democrats are actually in trouble. Though they're trying to add more information to Trump's legal defense, essentially to undermine it, they didn't. They actually just bolstered it. Let me explain. Here are four key facts Bondi omitted. Number one, Shokin's former deputy, Vitaly Kosko, said the investigation into Burisma and company owner Mykola Zlachevsky was inactive at the time of Joe Biden's pressure in late 2015 and early 2016. A leading Ukrainian anti-corruption activist said the same. Full stop. Is it possible that the reason it was inactive is because of the pressure? Is it possible they knew before Joe Biden arrived what he wanted and why, or at least had a general idea? And so Shokin, acting in the interests of his country, slowed things down. However, inactive does not mean non-existent. Is it possible it was inactive because they were awaiting some new evidence? Just because it's inactive doesn't mean he wasn't actively investigating. In fact, inactive means there was an open investigation, just wasn't moving forward. Well, that investigation seems to have ceased the moment he left. They say, Shok- quote, Shokin was not investigating. He didn't want to investigate Burisma. Daria Kel- Kelenyuk, executive director of Ukraine's anti-corruption action center, told the Washington Post for a July article. Full stop. Is it possible he didn't want to investigate because of the pressure? We don't know. We can't speculate. If you were going to argue that the case was inactive, and, and it has nothing to do with Biden, you are also speculating. We just don't know. But inactive doesn't mean non-existent. In fact, it means the opposite. So it stands to reason there was an investigation into Burisma. Burisma, I'm sorry. Just because this guy is not a good prosecutor doesn't mean he wasn't actively investigating. They say, quote, and Shokin was fired, not because he wanted to do that investigation, quite to the contrary, because he failed that investigation. And therein lies the biggest mistake that the Democrats or CNN, well, hold on, saying it's a mistake, it operates under the assumption they're trying to hurt the president. Let me just say this inter, in, uh, information here provides evidence that Joe Biden was actor, acting in a corrupt capacity. If it was true that Joe Biden got Shokin fired for not investigating, why then was there no investigation carried out by the new prosecutor? I'm sorry, that's a leap. There is a simple solution here. There was an inactive investigation into Burisma. Joe Biden's son worked for that company receiving large sums of money, and we don't necessarily know why. Joe Biden intervened to get a man fired, and now the new prosecutor comes in and does not investigate. The reasonable solution is that this prevented or stopped the investigation. Let me show you. In the Wikipedia page, for Mykola Zlachevsky, the guy who uh, founded and ran Burisma. They say, in 2014, the serious fraud office froze approximately $23 million belonging to companies controlled by Zlachevsky. And at the end of 2014, Zlachevsky fled Ukraine amid allegations of unlawful self-enrichment and legalization of funds during his tenure in public office. In January 2015, Prosecutor General Vitaly Yarema announced that Zlachevsky had been put on the wanted list for alleged financial corruption. At the end of January 2015, the Central Criminal Court in London released $23 million that were blocked on accounts of Zlachevsky due to inadequate evidence. In June 2018, the Serious Fraud Office stated the case was closed. 
Zolchevsky returned to Ukraine in February 2018 after investigations into his Burisma holdings had been completed in December 17 with no charges filed against him. Now we'll stop. They say the investigation was inactive. Well, that means there was one. They say this man was fired for not doing the investigation. The guy they brought in concluded with no charges filed against the man, which stands to reason at the very worst case for Joe Biden, he got an innocent man fired. They go on to say, however, on April 18, 2018, an alleged recording of part of a conversation between president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko and fugitive Ukrainian lawmaker Oleksandr Onyshenko was released, which implicated Zlochevsky in graft. In June 5th, on June 15, 2018, after the Sol- Solomyansky District Court in Kiev had annulled the ruling of the Specialized Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office to close criminal proceedings against him in 2017, Zlochevsky was accused of having illegally issued, while he was ecology minister, oil and gas licenses to the companies that be- uh, belonged to him. According to Ukrainian authorities, Zlochevsky is suspected of theft of government funds on an especially large scale. Authorities said the criminal investigation on suspicion of embezzlement is currently on hold because Lachevsky's whereabouts cannot presently be determined. As of 2019, he is reported he is reported to live in Monaco. So here's what I can put together. There was an inactive investigation. Joe Biden, according to the Democrats and the left, intervened because he wasn't investigating Barisma, where his son worked. Seems kind of odd, but potentially right. The new guy who comes in concludes the investigation with no criminal charges. And now Zlochevsky returns to Ukraine. Donald Trump gets elected. Donald Trump eventually begins looking into Joe Biden and corruption. And now Zlochevsky is on the run and new charges are being brought against him. I won't make assumptions. I don't know why the new charges are being brought against him. It may have absolutely nothing to do with Trump or Biden. But all of this lends itself to Uh, to prove Donald Trump's position, that there is a real reason to believe Joe Biden may have been acting in a corrupt manner. They say he was engaging in in sanctioned U.S. foreign policy. But if that's the case, why is it that, well, if that was the case, why was his son on the, let me, let me rephrase this. If he was engaging in U.S. foreign policy, he should have recused himself. Someone else should have come in because his son was on the board of a company he was potentially investigating. This man, Zlochevsky, has been accused of a lot of corruption. I find it strange that Joe Biden's son was making all this money, that Joe Biden says, fire this prosecutor with an inactive investigation. I'm I'm using theirs, which proves there was one. And the new guy comes in and clears Biden's colleague, Hunter Biden's colleague of, of all wrongdoing, no charges. That sounds to me like it's more likely Joe Biden intervened to protect his son. Now, I'll tell you my personal opinion. First, I don't know. But all Republicans need to prove is that Trump had a real reason to call for an investigation into potential corruption. That's it. I think we have it. The Democrats have to prove motive and they've done nothing. They've asked not a single question. What is Trump? Did Trump ever express fear in losing to Joe Biden? Did Trump state a full year before Joe Biden announced that he was worried about Joe Biden running and beating him? Because now the evidence has come out that while Democrats argued Donald Trump needed to fire Marie Ivanovich, the ambassador to Ukraine, because she was in the way of their scheme, Trump wanted her fired a full year before Biden even announced. And the argument from the left is that, but Trump knew Biden would be the front runner because of speculation. I'm sorry, it's all a very big leap. The real, I, I think the reality is, Donald Trump heard these stories, saw the viral video and asked them to look into it. And that was it. The Democrats have been trying to impeach Trump for forever, for everything. I believe this is the third or fourth time they've actually put a vote up for impeachment. It's just the first one to actually pass. So did Trump perceive corruption? I think it's fair to say the answer is yes. And there have been many calls and there have been many, many people who believe the corruption was actually worse than we realize. Let me show you this tweet from Elise Stefanik. She's a Republican, very much defending Trump. She tweets, what a stunning turn of events today to hear Adam Schiff declare from the well of the United States Senate that it is impeachable for a sitting president to allow the DOJ to investigate a political rivals campaign. She then says 2016 crossfire hurricane. I want to stop and break this down. Donald Trump was looking into, according to their own argument, Ukraine well before Joe Biden announced 
Joe Biden does not become immune from prosecution or investigation simply because he decides to run for president. Joe Biden is not immune from investigation or prosecution simply because some people in media speculate that he may actually run. But the evidence is actually overwhelming, in my opinion, that Trump was motivated by perceived corruption and nothing else. I personally do not believe that arrogant Mr. Donald Trump, President Trump, would fear Joe Biden, especially with the Democrats being as fractured as they are. It makes no sense that he would want to fire Maria Ivanovich a full year before Biden even announced, as if Trump would be panicking about Biden, especially when audio was released with Trump saying Bernie Sanders is the real threat to his campaign. That undermines everything. In the audio released, we hear Donald Trump say Bernie Sanders worried him because Bernie talked trade and trade was Trump's key point. How he was going to win was to talk about the free trade agreements. And so was Bernie. Why would Donald Trump fear Joe Biden when Joe Biden wasn't running? We knew Bernie was going to run and Bernie is someone Trump actually feared, according to audio released by, I believe, the lawyer of Lev Parnas, someone who was interviewed by Rachel Maddow. A lot of people have said that this interview and Lev Parnas' testimony is 4D chess. I'm not going to play any of those games, but I will say the desire of Democrats to get evidence from Parnas is backfiring to an absurd degree. Not only did we learn in all likelihood Trump wanted to fire Maria Ivanovich because she was bad mouthing him or he believed she was, we learned that Trump does not fear Joe Biden. If, if Donald Trump was doing anything it was not against Biden, especially uh, it, was, it wasn't against Biden out of fear of losing the election. You heard it from Trump himself, himself in the leaked audio. He feared Bernie Sanders. You'd think if Trump had illicit motives, he'd be going after Bernie, but he's not. He was he, he was investigating or wanting to investigate corruption. And there's a lot of reason to believe this, whether whether or not there there is corruption. I'm not saying Joe Biden is corrupt. I'm saying Trump just thought there was and so we wanted an investigation. Well, it would have cleared Joe Biden, wouldn't it have? Take a look at this story from last year. Interfax Ukraine. Biden partners received 16.5 million in payments stolen from Ukraine. If you saw this story, you'd probably think, oh, maybe we should investigate that. And there was a lot of news coming out accusing the Bidens of corruption for reasons I've laid out. If the Democrats want to prove Trump's motivation, they need to present evidence, but they haven't. And now some senators are speculating the impeachment trial could result in an acquittal as soon as this week. I do not believe the Democrats have proven their case. I don't know if Joe Biden is corrupt, but let me tell you my personal opinion on what Joe Biden actually did and what happened. Did you know, with all due respect, Joe Biden lost one of his children? His, my understanding now that Hunter Biden is his last remaining son. And Hunter Biden, by most accounts, is not doing too well. Accused of drug use, other nefarious, malicious, and even illicit or illegal acts. And he joins the board of a corrupt company using his father's name. Joe Biden gets word that his last remaining son is in serious trouble because there is an investigation. Not only that, it wasn't about the prosecutor general. It's about the fact that other entities in the, in, the, in the UK, for instance, wanted to investigate Burisma. Joe Biden's son was in trouble. So he stepped up to the plate and he said, fire the prosecutor. Not because Shokin was doing anything right or wrong. Perhaps Joe Biden didn't trust the guy. The new prosecutor who came in cleared Zlochevsky, the, the, the founder of Burisma, of all, crim, of all wrongdoing. They, the, the investigation concluded no criminal charges. Wow, what a very convenient, convenient outcome for Joe Biden's son. The prosecutor he got appointed, maybe indirectly, cleared his son's company of wrongdoing. I think Joe Biden and everybody knew this company was corrupt. I think Joe Biden was afraid for his son and did what he had to do. That's just my opinion. I don't know. That's the motive I would make the assumption toward. I have no proof, but that's what I feel. Now, if the Democrats want to make assumptions about Trump, please provide evidence. I'm not going to say definitively Joe Biden did this. All that matters is people assume that. But I got to tell you, man, based on my personal human experience, there is very little a father wouldn't do to protect his children. I believe many parents, many, not all, would give their lives, their careers and their legacy to make sure their children survive. So when you hear a story about Joe, uh, Hunter Biden and the horrible things he's been accused of doing at various nightclubs and the crimes and the fact that he worked for a, he was on the board of a corrupt company, potentially facing investigation, 
I think Joe Biden jumped in to save his son from from a bad fate, regardless of his own fate. And now Joe Biden reaps that reward. I'm sorry. I can respect you wanting to protect your children. But when you break the law and you act in a corrupt manner to protect your family above others, that's called corruption. In fact, one of the key roots of corruption is the desire to protect someone's friends and family. Why would someone take a kickback? It's not always about buying a yacht. It's sometimes about taking care of your family, getting your mama house. Corruption is about enriching yourself, your friends, and your family. A lot of the corruption we see is about making the life lives of the people around you better. Seems like Joe Biden to me. I think Joe Biden was doing just that. We'll see what happens. Now, I want to add one final note. Interfax Ukraine, take it all with a grain of salt. Um, the documents seem real. It's entirely possible Shokin is just trying to use the current impeachment trial and the chaos to clear his name or to make himself look better. Whether or not there will be criminal charges in an entirely other matter. But suffice it to say, one of the main arguments that Trump's legal defense has brought is what was Trump's motivation? And it seems based on the evidence, Trump had a real reason to want to investigate Joe Biden. That's just the way it is. So I think Trump should be acquitted. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast News, my second channel. And I will see you all then.